Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman, and you are listening to or watching Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here today. If you have any questions, please remember you can call me at 559-656-0317. You can actually text that number as well. You can also send an email with any questions you might have to questions at insurancehour.com. Or if you want an agent right away, dial pound 250 from your cell phone, use the keyword insurance, and voila, you will be connected to an insurance agent or broker that can help you hopefully right away. Today is going to be listener email slash voicemail calls and emails. We're going to answer questions that we have not been able to answer on the air previously because people were either calling and the line was busy or they sent emails or somehow we just missed each other. So, you know, I'm always promising you that I will always get to your calls, always get to your emails. Today, that promise comes true. If you miss any of these questions and you want to try and get a copy of this show for later or you want to share it with somebody, you can always find it online. It's on all of the podcast great aggregators and apps. You can also find it on iHeartMedia. You can find it on YouTube. Just search for Insurance Hour. You'll find us. Just look around. Look for Insurance Hour and you'll find it. So I'm going to, without further ado, go ahead and start with the first question that we have. These, uh, I just... Uh, paraphrased some of them, and some of them it looks like we just cut and paste right from the email for effect, I suppose. So for a first question that comes in, says, my homeowner's insurance company dropped me after never filing a claim. How can I fight it? It's a good question. Well, the reason they're dropping you has something to do with whether you can fight it or not. If you're in the situation where your insurance carrier is dropping in bulk, let's say they're getting rid of all of the risks, let's say in an entire zip code, or it might even be that the insurance company is pulling out of an entire county or me, or even an entire state. If that's the case, the likelihood of you being able to fight that is not very good. If the carrier is simply not writing insurance anymore, then there's not much to fight with. Now, if you've had your policy in force for a long time and you get a non-renewal notice and it's for some other reason, maybe they're saying, hey, we've noticed that you have holes in your roof. We've looked at satellite imagery. Or hey, during a recent inspection, we've noticed that you have some debris that's on your roof. Or we noticed that the condition of the house looks like it's not being well maintained. If there's something that they provide you with and you're able to make remedies to that, then what you're going to want to do is immediately, do not wait, the moment you're notified, reach out to the insurance company or reach out to the agent or broker and say, hey, I just received this notice from the insurance company. They're telling me I have to, let's just say, repair the roof or replace the roof. I'm willing to do it. What are my next steps? What documentation do you need? How long do I have to get it done? And follow through with each and every one of those steps. My experience has been that an insurance company is actually happier to have somebody with a new roof than with an old roof or a roof that is in need of repair. And they were already insuring that roof before. So if you're prepared to make the proper fixes for your property, the chances are the insurance carrier is going to be quite happy about that because now this risk went from being a bad risk because if there's a storm, it might leak. If there's something significant that happens, the roof might need to be repaired or replaced. And now they have a brand new roof. So you're actually doing something that not only will help you because let's face it, you're less likely to have a claim as well. You're doing what the insurance carrier needs to make the risk the risk. I keep saying sounds very rude somehow. Your home. The exposure, you're, 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 it's a risk. I can't think of another way to put it. You're making your risk a better one, right? Less likely to have a loss. So it's a win-win if you're able to do what it is that they're asking you to do. Now, sometimes they might give you information that you simply can't act on. It might be clearing brush through your neighbor's house. Well, you can't do that, right? You might still reach out to your agent or broker or the insurance company directly and pass that information on and say, look, I'm willing to make accommodations. I'm willing to clear the brush as far as my property line. I can't clear it beyond X, Y, Z point. Can you reconsider? I would also use photographs and be sure you're documenting everything along the way. However, keep in mind that insurance carriers do have the ability when a policy renews to underwrite it, to look at it, to see what the exposure actually looks like. It's one of the reasons that an insurance policy has a renewal date, that you don't buy a policy and it just goes forever. It gives the insurance carrier the ability to review the risk to be sure that it's still what they thought it was. 
and it gives you the ability to decide whether you're going to keep paying that price or whether you want to shop for something else. Hopefully that will answer your question. Next question says, I had one accident after driving for over 40 years and my rate doubled. Is this legal? Yeah, that's a tough one. And, and let me explain why this can happen sometimes. I'm not sure what state you're in. However, every state has different guidelines for how they're able to, they meaning the insurance carriers, how they're able to charge for accidents and how they're able to charge for tickets. So let's just use this person, let's use you as an example. Hopefully you're here listening. You've been driving for 40 years and you've never had a ticket and you've never had an accident and you've been paying a rate for that accordingly. However, now you have had, what was it, an accident or ticket? An accident, now you've had an accident. So you are a different risk than you were for the last 40 years. The last 40 years, you were a person without an accident. You are now a person with an accident. So when your policy comes up for renewal, they are going to do charge a rate for someone of your in your situation that has one accident. It's frustrating and I understand the logic behind it, why it seems like, well, I've had this great rate all these years. It's one accident. Why am I being penalized? You just have to look at it like math. It's nothing personal. What the insurance carrier is doing, and they do this at every policy renewal, just like they do for homeowners policies, they're looking at the exposure. They're looking at how much of a risk are you? And again, I keep saying risk. Risk is a generic term that we use in the industry that describes something that's being insured. If I'm insuring my little pinky, then what's the risk of me losing my little pinky? It's it's a risk, right? So don't look at it in, with a jaundice eye. I'm not saying it in some way like you're a risky something. It's just the terminology. So your rate is going to go up in this case because now you're a driver with one accident. You basically are fresh every time the policy renews. They're going to look at you and they're going to rate the exposure that they have. Look at it like you're renewing your vows with the insurance company every time it renews. You have to decide based on what you've had, what your experience has been, and what their experience has been. You both get to make a decision as to whether this is a good relationship and you want to move forward or if there's going to be some change that's going to be made. Remember, depending on what state you're in, the insurance carrier's ability to actually change your rate is regulated. They can't just decide to do whatever they want. These rates are all filed with the state departments of insurance and they should be fairly straightforward and they should be fair. Let's face it, that's what the Department of Insurance is there for, to be sure that rates are properly priced and surcharges are appropriate and not excessive. So that's the answer to that question. We're going to take some more questions as soon as we come back. If you have questions, feel free to give us a call, 559-656-0317. I am Carl Sussman, and you are listening to The Insurance Hour. We'll be back in a flash. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.